luminous souls. Thank you so much for tuning in. Your presence is both welcome and needed in this sacred space. This is Faith Inspired Action, the podcast. I am Tara Todd, multi-passionate healer, faith fanatic, plant medicine enthusiast, and co-creating queen. Nope, never been called modest. (laughs) But I am your host and I am so excited to venture on this journey with you. I help people remember who they are and harness their power to curate the life they desire. So we'll have conversations around mindset, metaphysics, faith, personal development, and expansion. I believe in one consciousness and the interrelation of all living things. So let's water each other's tree, nourish one another's soil, and empower humanity to align, transform, and transcend into their divinity. I am all about the healing, wholeness, and as a collective, living our most sovereign and authentic lives. I am extending my branch to you, so let's jump right in. Hello, hello, my luminous souls. Welcome to another episode of Faith Inspired Action, the podcast. I am very excited to come with to you guys today with this topic. We are going to talk about ego, fear, and dreaming big, something that affects all of us. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. I want to talk today about these brains we have and just how they work when it comes to achieving the things we want in life. When I started learning about energy and the interconnectedness, interconnectedness of the human experience, um, and then later on began coaching, I really saw even more magnified that we all have things that hold us back, cause us fear, make us feel unworthy, make us feel not enough. And a lot of times we think we're alone in these situations. And the truth is there's so many of us who share similar challenges and really can assist each other with, you know, finding ways to overcome. You know, for me, um, I was motivated to understand kind of why these experiences were so prevalent. Not only because I'm a total nerd and like to understand the kind of what, when, why, how, you know, have those questions. Um, Because as, as I've said before in other episodes, it helps me just to buy in even more. I don't necessarily need evidence, but when I understand the kind of mechanics behind something, it just helps me come up with practical ways of going about making changes that I desire to make in my life. So that's what I'm hoping this does for you as well. I want to share the knowledge and then, you know, you peeps can kind of look at your own life and see where you would like to make some shifts. So first we have the brain, of course, our caveman brain, which continues to operate the same way (laughs) despite our advances in our lifestyles. The brain is built for survival and comfort. You've heard me say this before. It wants to protect us which means anything outside of our normal habits, interactions, and basically like day-to-day lifestyle is perceived as threatening. Um, Have a job you really don't like and decide tonight's going to be the night I go home and get online and get myself out there. And what happens? You suddenly get this flood of excuses in the moment, Um, whether you're phone, laptop, iPad might need charging and so you can't get on until you get a full battery going or for some reason you're unusually interested in that movie that you've already seen like 10 times. Um, All of a sudden maybe you're just exhausted and, and need to lay down. Like so many reasons will pop up because the idea of change is threatening. I'm sure you've all been thinking you're a master. Um at making excuses. You're a master excuse maker. But nope, that's just how our brains are built. And it's something we all experience and have to push through. I believe I've mentioned this to you guys before. I actually received the guidance to start my podcast like seven years ago. And I have a communication degree. I've worked in media. I've hosted a radio talk show. I worked at a an ABC News affiliate. Yet, I didn't even launch the podcast until December of 2022. That's seven years of self-sabotage, procrastination, perfectionism. And those all derive from fear. Fear, F-E-A-R, 
false evidence appearing real. I mean, it's crazy that I would put myself through that, but I did. And then, of course, after you do the thing, you're always like, why did I wait so long? Like, what what was the big deal, right? It's always after the fact, though. (laughs) So typically when we think of fear, well, I initially think of something really big, maybe like moving to a new continent or even think of things, you know, that people do extreme sports or bungee jumping, right? Like for me, that's scary. But how about I still actually see people wearing masks when they're out walking by themselves? That's three years of the media's COVID fear that they have instilled in people. And these people can now not seem to be able to get back to how they lived prior. So your brain will sabotage your growth for sure. And this is why it can be really easy for people to even like give up on things like resolutions. Think about all the wasted gym memberships. It's crazy, right? But it's a new different thing you're trying to fit into your schedule. And even though, yeah, it might get you into great shape and you might be healthier and stronger, your brain is still going to throw everything at you and make you realize the gym is a bad idea and immediately kind of put on the playlist of what your normal life is where you feel comfortable. And that's why it's so easy to push, push past those comfort zones. I mean, think about it. Getting up at 5 a.m. and going to the gym is super dangerous <laughs> to your brain. It's like, hey, girl, hit the snooze. Snuggle in. You deserve this warmth and comfort. You know how hard you work. You know we got that big meeting today. You need your rest to be prepared for these people. And what do we do? We say, oh, yeah, that's right. And we stay in bed. We wake up later, do our normal routine. And guess what? The brain is ecstatic. It is like party time. Put out a little dopamine. We feeling good. We feeling more like ourselves, right? Because we're in our routine, our comfort zone. Our caveman brain is like a bodyguard, constantly observing the environment on alert for impending doom. Doom that used to look like wild animals and food scarcity. (laughs) But now impending doom is early morning meetings, project deadlines, and an overabsorption of blue light, 5G, and processed food. I mean, being serious, what primarily keeps us in fear and stress now are things that are emotional and social rather than physical. But to the brain... A threat is a threat. A threat is a threat. Then when you add in the ego. Now, the ego is where we often confuse the who we are with what we do. And we begin to to define ourselves that way, right? So normally when the ego is mentioned, people think of consciousness or personality, that form of self that we put on in order to kind of navigate the matrix we live in. I'm sure some of you follow Richard Rohr. He says the human ego prefers anything, just about anything, to falling or changing or dying. The ego is that part of you that loves the status quo, even when it's not working. It attaches to the past and present and fears the future. Is that not spot on? I mean, so spot on. (laughs) The ego's focus is to help us get what we want or need without losing anything. So again, it's fueled by fear and sees threats literally everywhere. Going back to what I said about how people confuse the who with what they do, The ego is the part that makes us think our career titles, our home, our vehicle, our financial portfolio, or our family name is what defines us, what defines our worth. You know, people love throwing around their their resume, so to speak, right? The ego is also where our fears, beliefs, regrets, 
desires and expectations live. And they are nestled right beside things that also keep us feeling separate, like jealousy and competition and the big one, judgment. So there's a lot going on there. The ego is that self-centered part of us that wants everyone to think, believe, and do what we think they should do. All you have to do is scroll through social media and read comments. (laughs) That's all you see is someone trying to force their narrative, their ideals, their way of doing things, their beliefs onto someone else. Someone makes a post they don't believe in or don't agree with and immediately they feel compelled to add their two cents of what they believe, even though they were not asked. And then you get these little nasty, you know, back and forths going because then people get defensive. I've been one of those people. I mean, this is the reason many people can't have religious or political conversations without, you know, getting juvenile and petty and disrespectful when someone has an opposing opinion or idea, right? And don't get me wrong, like I said, like this is not a conversation excluding anyone. We all have ego. We've all been guilty of this. There's no one of us who has not at some point fallen victim to our ego, who has done something not really in integrity with who we desire to be. Something else with the ego is that it hates ambiguity. So You might be one of those people who think you need to like have complete clarity and weigh out all your options before you make a decision, like research something, you know, till eternity, Um, like people who struggle to make decisions. Honestly, I I get a little intolerant with that. I I can't all that like mulling over, uh, making lists, checking it twice, asking your closest 200 friends and then doing a friggin' poll on your Insta stories. I can't. (laughs) I cannot. For me, I'm very much like have an idea and, um, and do it. I, I, if there is a reason that it takes me a long time to get to it, it's because it's something I really don't want to do. And I just need to come to that decision or, decide I do want to do it and jump in like I did with the podcast. That was seven years of procrastination. So that wasn't really a decision, but in a way it was a decision. Same thing. Again, we're all guilty of, you know, all these same little crazy things that we do, little habits and little ways of going about things. Um, when you struggle to make a decision, there's a few things going on there. It's that ego fear, primarily, I'm sure, you know, telling you horror stories in your head, but it's also a lack of guidance and a lack of self-trust. And it's a great excuse, right? Like how many of us didn't take action because we felt, you know, I need to understand this step by step. I can't, I just can't commit. It was just our way of saying it's really not what we want, but we don't want to come out and admit that for whatever reason. Maybe it's hard to admit to ourselves or maybe it's going to hurt someone's feelings. But usually when something is really, really right for us, we tend to move a lot quicker. And I find that when people are mulling things over for an extended period of time, it's usually because it's not really what they want and they just need to kind of get to that realization but self-trust is huge and it took me basically to this big age to understand the importance of self-trust I spent the majority of my life breaking promises to myself tomorrow I'll start that diet Monday I'll start working out and I didn't understand that every time I did that it was actually making it harder and harder to show up for myself. Which, 
you know, when you look at it, it works the same way as would with any relationship. You break a bunch of promises and trust melts away. It's that basic. But when you keep those promises to yourself and you do the things you say you're going to do, that self-trust comes back around to benefit you when you're really like ready to make a huge leap. Let's say you're buying a business or investing six figures into something or building a house, starting a nonprofit, things that take a lot of commitment and dedication, right? But once you've proven to your mind that when you give yourself your word, you keep it, then your ego starts to recognize you don't need constant saving. Not every change equals death, impending doom. And through that, your body will learn to trust you more and will continue to show up for you more and more and more. So it's really important to own our self-trust and do things that build self-trust. Stick to our promises to ourselves because that feeds into fear, feeds into self-sabotage, procrastination, perfectionism, which again are all forms of fear. The ego isn't going anywhere and its job is actually quite necessary. So we can learn to create more balance in our lives once we begin to be aware of fear-based patterns and start to kind of move through those. As we know, courage isn't the absence of fear. It's having the fear and doing the thing anyway. So how many of us are guilty of the future tripping? I'll be happy when that conversation. I'll be happy when I get that raise, lose 10 pounds, buy that house, find that soulmate. Again, Just like with many other things in life, happiness is a choice that we get to select every single day. So what are you actually doing to cultivate happiness and joy? You can't sit on the sidelines being mad about someone else's success if you aren't willing to make any moves for yourself. And the reality is that There's no future that just includes joy that allows you to bypass it today and then one day you're just going to be walking along and fall into the, the happiness hole. It doesn't work like that. The only moment you truly have is right now. The future isn't promised. And happiness is what will always be there long after the illusions fall away. So when you future trip and you, you extend things and say, well, when this happens, then I can be happy or I can't have happiness or I can't be satisfied or can't be content until something happens. You're just enforcing the illusion that something else is what creates better for us. Better is always available. It's a choice. So don't further anchor in the notion that your happiness is linked to something outside of you that is unattainable because that's a total lie. It's just reaffirming doubt, self-sabotage, perfectionism. And we all know, again, those are synonymous to fear. False evidence appearing real. How many people do you know that have said, I'm not going to be happy until, um, I don't know, I'm making a certain amount of money every year. And then they start making that money and what? They're still not happy because now it's something else outside of them that they're, they're gunning for. That's crazy, but we do it. We do it all the time. The ego keeps us playing small, taking the safe route. The ego is is, is really quite uh, genius. It will create an entire story about something and we'll believe it for decades with zero proof that it's true. 
Like how many of us are guilty of that? You know, those stories that tell you you're not lovable as you are, that you don't deserve something or you're unworthy of something for some reason, maybe because of how you grew up or maybe you just don't feel you measure up in certain spaces. It's always dumb, superficial nonsense, right? But it weighs so heavily on us. Like, where do these stories come from? Looking at the ego and just the way the brain functions with stress. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I did. I thought my notifications were all off, so my apologies. But um, yeah, definitely the ego and the brain are working in tandem. And the sole purpose is kind of, you know, keep us in bed, keep us snuggled, cozy, you know, favorite movie situation, good snacks, like, girl, right? And that's the vibe sometimes. But that can't be how we live. At least not if we truly desire to live, right? <laughs> so how do we manage to overcome the brain and the ego and the fear stuff? How do we how do we reach for our big, beautiful dreams? First, I want to say that your dreams and your fantasies and those things that you might feel ridiculous to share with other people, but they are big desires or desires that have been with you for a long time, those are gifted to you by God. That's why not all of us have the same desires, right? And also why no one can determine what success means for you. And the thing is, there's nothing wrong with wanting to achieve, you know, big, crazy, amazing goals, whether it's being a CEO, traveling the world, owning a farm, opening a nonprofit. Maybe you've always wanted to build a homeless shelter, you know. Whatever it is, God would not let you have the vision if he didn't also equip you with the means to obtain it. Now, before you even jump in and say, uh, Tara, why don't I have a million dollars in my account? Because I've been desiring that for a long time. And I got you, boo. I'm happy to address it. You aren't a vibrational match, and that's on you. Because most people who don't have what they desire, or those who just choose, you know, not to shoot for those big dreams, typically don't achieve it because they're afraid to try. They're stuck in their ways. They don't want to be open to a different perspective or a new way of doing things. And so they're not a vibrational match. And I've burned myself that way before. I've had to really get out of my own way when it comes to this is how I see it working. That mentality of having, you know, so much definition and detail that it has to work that way or no way. That's just closing me off to infinite possibilities because God can see it a different way. He can see it millions and millions of different ways that I don't have the capacity to see. And he can often see a better way, an easier way. And I'm constantly having to remind myself of that. So my point is your dreams are valid and you can accomplish anything you desire. And that is where our soul comes into play. Our all-knowing, fractal of God, peace of divinity, navigation guide, guiding post where the human resides for now. Because we are a soul having a human experience. And our ego is just the resistance and the mask that we put on to cruise through this matrix. Our soul is the fractal of God that we were created from. It's what gives us the power to do the incredible things that we have seen others accomplish. Our soul is our conscience, our intuition, our guide, our wisdom. 
We are soul first and forever. Some of you call it your higher self. It's absolutely for sure my most refined and evolved version. <laughs> so that's a, that's a great description. If you grew up in church, in, in the Christian uh, religion, then you know the Bible says that God implanted or imparted in us the Holy Spirit. It's all the same thing. It's our soul. It's the piece of us that connects us directly to God, gives us all kinds of powers that this matrix tells us we don't have and continues to try to limit us. And then our brain and our egos, you know, continue to enforce that. And we just have to fight, fight, fight. And how do we fight is anchoring into soul. The soul has all the answers. It knows the whole story it can give us guidance anytime we ask and choose to listen. It's incredibly wise, resilient, calm, and relaxed, yet powerful, right? And always rooted in love. Our soul is not reactive. It's anchored in knowing, trusting, and surrendering, which is why it doesn't have have to have or does it need front to back clarity on every single thing faith guides the soul it's just a trusting a knowing faith or the soul the soul will spread its faith filled wings and soar that's how I like to imagine it, like, because it knows there's nothing to fear, right? God's going to be the wind beneath our wings. We're always supported. We're always loved. We're always held. And we always eventually land on our feet, no matter what we go through, when we are anchored in soul. Knowing all that we know that's available to us, imagine the chances we'd take if we actually fully believed it, embraced it, and embodied it. And I'm speaking to myself as well, right? And that's where we have the inner work. Where we've got to push through limiting beliefs. We've got to get to the core of some of these stories and unearth those because they've got roots, They've got roots that have been steadily growing and getting deeper decade after decade after decade. That's why the inner work is so important. That's why we have to do those kinds of things to become a vibrational match for these beautiful desires that we hold. We all know the Martin Luther uh, Martin Luther King Jr. quote that says, you don't need to see the whole staircase. You just need to take the first step, right? I love that because stepping into the unknown just means taking the smallest, tiniest, inching little baby step that you can. It's just that first intention, that just that first little thing. Just do that first little thing. Because what I know about God, my God, and that's whether you believe in him or not, whether you choose to call it spirit, universe, source, I don't care. What God does is he honors our steps when we are living from soul. He will take that tiny little inch of a baby step <laughs> that we take with all of our fear and uncertainty and catapult us literally into the stratosphere when we trust, when we surrender, when we believe. We call it collapsing time, a quantum leap, a miracle, magic. What it's meant to do is show you that when you honor the desires of your soul and live for those things that enrich and nourish you, you will surely be supported. Those leaps are to embolden you, embolden us, to live more fully from soul. 
anyone that ended up becoming or achieving something incredible or created something amazing, they pushed through the fear. Trust me that they had it. Yes, there are people born into beautiful lives. Of course we have that. Such a small minority, right? But for the majority of us, we need to have the mental fortitude to push through and overcome because we all have some block. We all have something, that thing that we might struggle with. And some of us may have more than one. But whatever it is, we, we are needing to do that work so that life can be different, so that we can obtain the things we desire to obtain. On the other side of fear is everything you ever wanted. So we have to get to the point where we understand that the voice in our head isn't always giving us the facts, right? In actuality, most of the time, it's the exact opposite. We have to get into that habit of questioning those things and determining if they are ultimately true and then decide what action to take from there. I also think it's important to look at the untruths and really get to the root of those. This is how you shift your mindset and heal limiting beliefs. You know, I like to look at them and say, is this ultimately true? And if not, where did this story come from? What does it say about me? Why have I held on to it? How has it allowed me to hide? Or what behavior is it justifying? And then what is the truth? And what does that say about me? How will it serve me? And most importantly, who does it ask me to become in order to exist on that level? God did not create us to have a mediocre or dispiriting human experience, you know, to play small, settle for less, and give up on ourselves and just struggle through the entire experience. Why would anybody believe that? Why would you even ever assume that you were meant to struggle, struggle, struggle from our creator that you would think that he, that's what he wants for us. He is the source of love. God is the source of love, right? Infinite potential, infinite possibilities. I mean, it's just like there's no lack on the planet. There's no lack within us. Homelessness, food shortages, medical care issues, those are all man-made lack. We create both the lack on the earth and within our own personal lives. We do that. The human, the ego, you know, the matrix. But the soul has all the answers. So when we take the time to get quiet, tune in, listen in, follow, following our intuition, that's how you can truly achieve greatness. My life has changed exponentially from really developing a closer relationship with my soul. And I'm not done yet. Like there's so much more to build. The ego will always do its job and that's okay. You know, we need that. But once we begin to recognize our patterns, our responses to situations, you know, we can either choose to continue to move in those areas or we can work through those things and aim for a life without limitation. If we work on being mindful and present, we can literally hear and feel our soul's guidance. You know, those nudges that say, I know it's scary, girl, but this is going to be so good for you. When we anchor ourselves in our divinity, then we are able to rely on the strength, wisdom, and love that God implanted within us. We get to see truth. We don't have a problem seeing truth in other people, though. You ever have a friend or family member or coworker come to you and they've, they're like, oh my God, there's this huge thing that just happened and I've got this great opportunity and 
they're telling you all about it. And, and then at the end, they say, you know, it sounds amazing, I know, but like, I'm really scared to commit to it. And I'm not sure I'm ready for that level. And what do we do in, in that moment? We, am, we immediately become a mom, a coach, mentor, healer, psychic, we become the person who is looking into that person and, and able to see everything that they've done and, and what they've accomplished and suddenly able to give them an entire dissertation on why they were built for this very moment and this huge, exciting thing. It's so easy to see potential in others and call it out with leadership and passion and surety, but are we doing that with ourselves? We see those closest to us, we accept them faults and all, we love them regardless, because those are the things that don't tell the whole story. We see who they are beyond. But are we doing that with ourselves? The only thing that's holding us back is our own negligence in harnessing our energy, becoming a vibrational match, and doing the inner work that is required to actually achieve the things we desire to achieve. The opposite of love is fear. So at any given time, if you ask ask yourself, you know, which end of the spectrum am I operating from at this moment? You can do that with everything. You can do that with every decision. You should be always making decisions out of love and not out of fear. And you can literally ask yourself with every scenario, whether you're getting ready to buy, you know, an $80,000 car, you can ask yourself, am I doing this out of love and not fear or fear? Am I doing it because this car just, does something to me it turns me on it makes me feel powerful and sexy and it's going to be so much fun and I love the way it drives and like it's my favorite color has everything I wanted and I just love it or are you buying that car because well my neighbor's got a new car and you know this is the popular car to get now and everybody's talking about it and so you know I should probably kind of go ahead and commit because I want to fit in that's fear. You can literally apply that conversation to everything, even things like buying a coffee. You have people who love Starbucks and, and, you know, promote it beyond anything. Well, are you going to Starbucks because you love the taste of their coffee? It just does something to you. It brightens you up. It starts your day right. It feels really good going down and it just you know, is something that makes your day feel like you're off to a great start. And and it's their coffee that does that for you beyond, you know, anyone else's. Or is it Starbucks is prestigious, you know, it's expensive coffee. So if I'm walking around with the Starbucks cup, it says something about who I am and how I'm capable of spending my money. And um, I make popular choices so I'm with the like in crowd that's fear so it's a great practice to get into you know asking yourself where you're at and then making some shifts as you desire we create our lives moment by moment each day is a new opportunity we literally wake up with new grace and mercy so why not look at things with a fresh perspective take inspired action choose differently Right. And remember that, you know, anything that you are taking on with regard to personal development and up leveling, be gentle with yourself. Because whatever age you are is how long you've had a lot of those patterns and those stories coursing through you. And it takes time, my love. You've got to incorporate some grace and some self-love in these processes and shift yourself very naturally into a new way of being. Not harsh, not yelling, not negative talking to yourself and, oh, I'm so stupid, I messed up again today. No, we can't do that. you got to guide yourself the same way you would guide that friend, that family member. Like, babe, you got this. 
okay, we made a little mistake, no problem, we're gonna do better. We're gonna take a different action tomorrow and keep that journey going and change your life the way you desire to change it. So, my bright, shining, luminous souls, that actually concludes today's conversation. And I pray it serves you all. I pray that there's something in here that helps move your life forward. And of course, if you ever have any questions or things, you're absolutely encouraged to message me. But until next time, I want to remind you of the important role you serve in this world and how much humanity needs you. I love you and I speak blessings into every area of your life. Thank you so much for joining me here at Faith Inspired Action, the podcast. Whether this is your first listen or you join me regularly, I am eternally grateful. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please do me the honor of liking, subscribing, and leaving me a comment or review. I'm totally up for connecting online too. So please follow me on Instagram at Faith Inspired Action. Then go to my link tree to join my private Facebook group and check out my current offerings. I welcome your questions, feedback, and insights. Also, if you have something amazing to share with the world, I'd love to invite you on a future episode. Just direct message me a basic synopsis of your story and include your email. Until next time, I love your luminous soul and thanks for sharing your light with this community. Music written and produced by my brother, Gabe Taylor at Lord Kingdom Productions. All rights reserved.